On today's episode, I'm gonna talk about this logo right here and nervousness when it's time to grab that mic when you DJ. This is Share the Knowledge. For the last 22 years, I've been rocking stages, playing in clubs, and having a lot of fun as a DJ and turntablist, and I've seen and learned a lot. Now it's time for me to share that knowledge by answering the questions that can help you become a better DJ. I'm DJ TLM, and this is Share the Knowledge. Hey guys, what's going on? It's DJ TLM, you're watching DJ TLM TV, and welcome to episode 20 of Share the Knowledge. In this show, I answer questions that you guys can ask me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. My handle is DJ TLM. Just ask me a question and add the hashtag share the knowledge so I can check out your question and I might answer it on a future episode. You're watching on YouTube right now, but if you want to check out the podcast, the audio version, you can go to iTunes and SoundCloud and the links will be in the description box down below. All right, I have a question from Rodney. The question is in Dutch. I'm going to translate for you guys, but the question is how I found my colors, the colors that I use for DJ TLM TV, so that's the black and yellow, and uh, what I would advise if someone's looking for their own style for a website and for logos. So that's why I wore the shirt because I knew this question was coming up today. Yellow is my favorite color. It is as simple as that. That's why it became uh, yellow. And the logo is black and yellow because I have vinyl in the back. And in this case, I'm wearing a black shirt, but I also have it on yellow shirts and white shirts. But that is the main reason why yellow is in there. And otherwise, it might have been uh, white, blue, red. But yellow is my color. And I have the custom laptop, my old MacBook, which also had like the skin that was black with yellow accents and my 909 mixer had that, my turntables have that. That's just the style I chose. I designed all of that myself and to me it works. It wasn't done professionally. I might get it upgraded and get a pro version of everything, but I just went with what felt natural to me. But when it comes to colors, there are actual, um, there have been studies done that show what colors have a certain effect on people and how they feel when they see those colors. I mean, it's not a coincidence that big sites like Facebook and Twitter use a lot of blue. That's because blue has a certain effect. That's why a lot of those sites aren't like red or purple. Um, I don't know the actual science behind it, but that should be able to be found online. So try to Google that. But more importantly, try to find colors that go with you. You might have a favorite color and it could be cool to have that logo in your favorite color. It all depends. Some colors might not work as well for a logo, but I'm no expert when it comes to design and what's right and what's wrong because I've done all of that myself. I freestyle with all of that. So when it comes to my logo, when it comes to doing custom designs for my equipment, when it comes to my websites, and right now I have two websites that are super basic and I might actually start to upgrade them and add some more stylish ele elements to it. But for me at this moment, that's not important. And actually when I'm working on my website the next time, and I could advise that to you as well, Make sure that you focus on mobile because more and more people are checking everything they do online on their phone and not on a desktop computer or on a laptop. So make sure that everything is web ready or mobile ready, ready for phones. Um, but that's it as far as colors. Either go with your favorite colors or check a little bit of research and find out what works. When it comes to websites, I try to keep it clean and at least make sure that it's easy on the eyes so you don't want people to come to your website and be like, ooh, what's happening with the colors? But beyond that, I have no scientific answer to back anything up. I just love yellow. All right, I have a question from Cade, I guess it is. 17 years old, new to DJing, and one of his biggest problems is talking on the mic. He's a little bit nervous, but sometimes it gets the best of him. And what are some of the precautionary measures to take to ensure that this doesn't happen? He's doing a wedding soon and he wants to work out all the flaws to ensure that he can be a great DJ and build a reputation. All right, you can be a great DJ without ever touching a microphone. Let's get that out of the way right now. 
because mic skills are definitely a plus but it all depends on what you do. Now, if you're gonna be a, a wedding DJ, mobile DJ, then it is definitely more important that you're also able to rock that microphone. At weddings, you're definitely doing a lot of speaking while you're playing. At certain weddings, I know that's the case. Please, mobile DJs, wedding DJs, jump in and, and, and talk about this. But for me, it came more naturally because back in the days, um, I used to write lyrics as well rap as well. I was doing a little bit of everything, a little bit of breaking, rapping, DJing. Um, so that's where I first learned how to talk through mics. But I, at first I felt awkward when I had a little recorder and I first recorded myself and I heard my own voice. That sounded like an alien to me. It sounds weird to hear your own voice recorded. But I became more and more used to it and I did radio where I had to present and I presented on TV. So that's where I learned how to talk to the camera uh, and I'm practicing with this every day as well. So for me it came naturally I guess, but there are no real precautionary measures you can take. You just need to practice. You just need to practice and become better at it. So make it become more natural to do and that happens by doing it more often uh, and it, it can be hard at first I definitely agree and you can't just practice that at home you can stand in front of a mirror with a, with a microphone or with anything and act like you're talking to a crowd that is not the same thing as talking to a crowd and you're not alone in this I mean a lot of you can probably think back to the days when you were in school or maybe you're in school right now and we all had that time when we had to talk in front of the class you had to give your presentation and that's in front of a bunch of kids that you're in the class with every day and still that felt awkward and for some was really hard to do and for others easier. But a lot of people did have to step over that, uh, that boundary that was holding them back at first. So um, practice, practice. There's, there's not really another option. I mean, there, you, you, you tell me that it got the best of you, your nerves are... Uh, uh, the more you practice, the more confident you become and the easier it will get. That's probably the best advice I can give you. So again, question of the day. To all DJs out there who use a microphone during their sets in clubs, at private parties, weddings, whatever, what did you do to get over that initial hump, that, that first little bit of nerves that kind of holds you back? And let's be honest, nerves will always play a role when you do something new. Also, when it comes to DJing, your first time playing in front of people, that's going to give you a nervous feeling. And I remember the first time I did a turntablism routine in front of people. That was after I already DJed in front of people for a couple of years. But still, when it was time to do that first routine, it felt like it was my first time on stage. I was nervous as can be. It was in the middle of a show with a group that I was DJing for. Um, that all felt natural. I had been DJing for a couple of years. I've been performing with them for a while. But this time in Amsterdam, in a club called Paradiso, in their main room, I was going to do a turntablism set. So when my time came and they announced that I was going to do that, my heart was going crazy and I felt those nerves. I definitely felt them. Because even though I practice the routine at home, when you're in front of people, it is uh, a different situation. But I just had to be like, okay, it's showtime, let's go. And once I started, it felt great. And it went okay. But those nerves were definitely there. So you're going to deal with that with different situations. You could be DJing in small clubs for years. When you play your first big club, it's going to give you nerves. But the more you practice, the more confident you become the easier it gets, hopefully. <laughs> Good luck. So that's it for today's episode of Share the Knowledge. If you have any questions, you know where to reach me. Go to Twitter, Instagram, or Snapchat. The handle is at DJTLM. Ask me anything at that hashtag, Share the Knowledge, and I might see your question here and answer it for you. See you next time.